like any good video about hiking volcanoes in Guatemala, we start off in Bangkok. So before we dig into the hike, I'll fill you in on where we left off. We took a flight from Oaxaca to Guatemala City, then a shuttle from Guatemala City to Antigua. And on that car ride, I caught not one, but two shinies, and they were back to back. Kendra, that's great. I just caught back to back shinies, so. That's what we call a hot start. Keeping it rolling, I got to Antigua around dusk, and you could see the three volcanoes around town perfectly as the sun was setting, which I didn't realize is actually pretty rare because it's usually cloudy in the afternoon but it was her first night there, so I didn't do anything more than take a few half-ass snapshots. But we hit a brewery and got a rooftop view for dinner. Cheers. Then things kind of went downhill for the next few days. Kendra got really sick, then I was really sick, and we just laid in bed all day. It felt like I had food poisoning for two days. Next thing we know, it's day four in Guatemala, and we haven't really done anything except go to the corner store for electrolyte drinks. But I did get a few snaps along the way. Now let's talk shop for a second. The cameras are the same as always. Got the Sony a7 IV, 24mm lens, 50mm, 85mm, and then my Canonet for film. But the real difference here is my film stock this time around, and I'm shooting Harman Phoenix. For those not tapped into the film photography world, Harman released a brand new color negative film stock about four months ago, and this is a big deal for a few reasons. A new from scratch color film stock is not common. This isn't a reschool, this is brand new made from the ground up. Big film manufacturers are not doing this regularly at all. Plus, this is Harman's first color film stock, and that means it was a huge effort for them on all fronts. That also means they see market potential, which is good for everyone. So yeah, new film was exciting, and I wanted to support it by at least shooting a roll. Problem is, I'm not totally in love with the way it looks. The warmth is fun, but the contrast seems brutal. It blows out whites and crushes blacks. It kind of sucks the life out of everything, but I wanted to make this film stock work, so what if I shot it somewhere fiery hot, where nothing around is alive anyways? Then maybe I would be onto something. So we had two days to actually do stuff around Antigua, but then it was time to get down to business. Business being an overnight hike of Acatenango, one of Guatemala's 37 volcanoes. A little context here, Antigua is 1,500 meters above sea level, so a bit of an elevation. Acatenango is about 4,000 meters. The hike itself is about 18 kilometers, so the baseline of what this hike is is already fairly difficult, and I was also just puking everything I ate about 48 hours ago. But hey, I paid for a guide, so I'm hitting the trail. Before we left, they recommended that everyone use trekking poles, but I was like, nah, I gotta hold my cameras. And I kind of thought other people would be on my wavelength with this, but it turns out I was the only one in the group to not have trekking poles. The other thing that this guided hike offered was to carry your bag 80% of the way up Acatenango, so all you had to take was a little day pack with a little bit of water and your lunch. But again, I wanted to have my camera gear, so I said nah and kept my big backpack and then just sent a little bit of water up the way with the guides. Next thing you know, we start the hike and everyone only has a tiny day pack and their trekking bowls, except me. The first 30 minutes of the hike might actually be the worst part. It's a sand gravel mix and it goes straight up. I started getting a blister like five minutes in, but I shifted around my pack weight a little bit and was able to dodge that bullet. This first section has barbed wire fences lining the trail for some reason, so if you fell here, you would get pretty sliced up. It's a good incentive for careful steps.
After a pretty grueling hour or so, we reach the cloud forest, and thank god, here the trail changes from sand into actual dirt. The plant diversity is pretty, but there's not too much of a view considering it's all clouds around you. Two cameras. You know the vibes. We cleared that portion after another hour or so and then stopped for lunch. The sandwich they gave us was pretty tasty, but that might have just been because my body was burning calories like a bonfire. The amenities could use some love though. From here we had another grueling bit of terrain, just like the beginning, straight up, sand, gravel, and this time more sun exposure. But you do get rewarded with a little bit of a view. Oh, finally a break. It's only like 10 minutes, I think. Oh, holy shit. Around this point, my capture clip unfortunately broke. I guess one of the screws came undone earlier, so when the second one came undone, the entire thing just fell apart. This was a huge bummer because it was actually really clutch, but I am thankful that it survived most of the hike. But now at this point, I'm actually just walking one camera in each hand. Anyways, we got to the last 20% of our climb up, and our guide called it Guatemalan Flat, which, if you can guess, is not actually very flat. But by then, you could see glimpses of Fuego smoke, and that was the encouragement I needed. Fine. The flat part. Thank God. Tapping into the good shit. Let's go, okay. After reaching base camp, they gave us the option to do a sunset hike to Fuego, and honestly, I was sketched out. I did not eat enough throughout the day. We had just spent five hours hiking, and we only got an hour to rest up. But I was trying to see some lava, so I said yes. So I spent the next hour just shoveling trail mix into my mouth. When we started Fuego, our guide motioned with the trekking poles to just be firm and put them both in the ground at the same time as you're walking, and then he just kind of looked at me and laughed. The trail to Fuego was dusty, and while it made it hard to breathe, it also made for some fire picks. vastly underestimated how dusty this is. The camera is coated.
Getting to Fuego's Ridgeline was surreal. You have a 360 degree view, you're above the clouds, and you have three volcanoes in view, one of them active. It is unlike anything else I've ever experienced. This angle is what I came here for. I need to be this close to the volcano to get anything decent with a 40 millimeter lens. So I set up my tripod, get my cable release attached, and just waited. It was about 15 minutes between eruptions, and by this time exposures were reaching about 5 minutes. So I hung on to my hope for one more shot. The hike back to camp was tough, sandy, limited division, and we're around 10 hours deep of hiking that day. The last 20 minutes, I was a zombie. Completely dehydrated, greasy, haven't eaten a meal in hours, pounding headache, but finally made it back and got a hot meal in us. It's kind of funny, usually lentils are one of the foods I would prefer really not to eat, but hiking will fix your appetite. After dinner, I pounded some marshmallows by the fire and chatted with some other hikers about the Fuego experience. But I didn't hang out too long because I had some more shots that I wanted to bag. Near my base camp hut, I set up my tripod and swapped on my 85mm lens. I did a few test shots to get an idea for the exposure and composition, and I didn't want to ramp up the ISO too much, so I set on the ISO 1600 10 second shutter f1.8. Then, it was back to the waiting game. The stars that I saw from Akatenango were unlike anything I had ever seen. Previously, I'm someone who considered myself lucky if I see the Big Dipper, so seeing a whole galaxy with my bare eyes was genuinely a lot to take in. After Fuego settled down for a moment, I decided to set up my Canonet one more time. I really wanted to try and capture some star trail photos with the volcano in the scene, but I only had one tripod, so I just set my Canon up on a little post. I was also concerned about missing focus because my Canon does have some problems when focusing to infinity, so I set my aperture to f5.6, let it sit, and then got back to digital work. Now in film, it's really easy to get star trail photos because of light reciprocity failure. You just leave your camera out with your shutter open and the star trails will come. But on digital, it requires a little more effort. Thankfully, I did my homework and it was time to put it to the test. I framed up a 24mm shot with a little bit of foreground action and set up my intervalometer to take, I think, 130 shots over the course of an hour and a half. Kind of a random guess to be honest, but I knew that I wanted about 30 seconds between each exposure. Once I had both my cameras set up, it was time to just kick back Look at the stars and watch the lava flow. While it's not perfect, I think this is a pretty stellar first attempt at Star Trail photos. There's only two or three eruptions while I was shooting, and they weren't nearly as spectacular as the other ones I saw earlier. But hey, those are definitely star trails. 
As for the film picture, I think I made a mistake of setting my aperture at f5.6. I really didn't want to misfocus, but I also thought that f5.6 would still let in enough light to see more stars, but I think that's where I was wrong. I think if I set it to f1.7 or f2, you would have seen much brighter stars and still got that volcano, but uh, it was really just a guess, so what can you do? And honestly, I would have shot another round of star trail photos, but around 11 o'clock after everyone had gone to bed and I was the only one up, I saw some people who I don't think were affiliated with our group wandering around. That's when I decided it was time to pack up my stuff and get in my cabin. They were walking around with flashlights and they kind of turned off their flashlights just in a way that made me think they didn't want to be seen and that I should go. I scrambled to pack all my shit up, grabbed my camera mid-exposure, threw it in my cabin and climbed in my sleeping bag and just tried to go to bed. In the end, I slept for maybe three hours and I woke up just around sunrise and dawn to get a few more shots before our descent began. Oh, and this really cute trail dog showed up that morning too, and he was eating up that morning glow. But no one really cares about the descent, and we kind of blazed down it in like two hours anyways, so I didn't stop for many photos. When we finally got back down to Antigua, I fucked up a pizza, and then spent the whole day showering. I was just so gross. All my clothes were just covered in volcanic ash, and no matter how many times you wash them, you would just keep on getting more and more ash out of them. It was unreal. All right, real quick, I gotta get off my high horse. This project made me feel like I just won a chip. I did it all. I had an awesome idea, a good combination of materials, and I went, I went across the world to shoot this volcano, traveled 10,000 miles with the film, protected it through all the TSA and gate agents, got it developed and edited it. Everything really just came together and I cannot wait to get these printed. It feels so good to have a project come to life like that, and I don't think I've ever experienced anything like that before. I think this role of Harmon Phoenix was probably one of the best roles that I've ever shot as a whole, and I think something that contributed to that was the fact that I had it pulled one stop. Like I mentioned earlier, the contrast on this film stock is pretty intense, so getting it pulled helped reduce that a little bit, and I also got high quality TIFF scans so I could edit them even more. And that's just part of the analog digital hybrid workflow. Don't get it twisted. But yeah, sound compositions with a lot of vibrant color that really fits the part. It's literally an active volcano on film. How could it not be cool? And for digital, I kind of killed it there too. At least a few of these volcano pictures are print worthy, and I got a lot of other great pictures along the way that I'm not as excited about because they don't compare to the volcano pictures, but are still really good. Like I said before, I think the Star Trail photo is an awesome first attempt, and I think I'll spend a lot of time in post with this image because I think if I play around with masking, I can get the foreground sharper and while maintaining the sharpest in the background too, because right now it's a little motion blurry. So yeah, that's the Akatenango hike. It was a surreal experience, and if you have any interest in doing it, you absolutely should because I haven't experienced anything like it in my life. But I hope you guys were as stoked for the photos as I was. I think they came out great. Uh, if you're interested in prints or anything, let me know. I'll be happy to work something out. I have a Substack newsletter that I need to plug real quick. It comes out about every other week when I release a new video. It's really just a notification to let you know that I posted on YouTube again and some other ramblings that I have. And then you can follow me on Instagram at kcockerline to see more of my pictures if you're interested. I think that's everything that I have to plug. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one in about two weeks with probably some lesser quality photos to be honest. <laughs>